I'm going to talk about uh, San Frederick Wang. I'm working at Igalia and I'm going to talk about MathML in browsers, more specifically the work that we have done recently and focusing on the, the goal to implement it in Chromium. Uh, as you can see, this is a formula, a native MathML formula rendered by Chromium. And I'm not going to enter into all the details, but uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask and we can also talk during the breakout session. <clears throat> First, I'm just going to give a very quick history of MathML, uh, only focusing on the most important details, or, well, at least what I think are important, and uh, most specifically what I think are key milestones for implementing uh, MathML in browsers. So the first thing to note is that um, uh, in the early version of HTML, there are already a proposal for math tag. And, but, uh, so it was in the early 90s. But at the end it was abandoned and a separate specification was uh, created. Uh, so the MathML specification and it was released in 1998. Uh, in 1999, uh, Roger from started to work on a MathML implementation in Mozilla. And I think uh, the first release happened in 2002. It was Mozilla 1, so it was even before Firefox was ever released. And uh, he actually did a very good job. Uh, he continued working on Mozilla until 2005, uh, 2006. But in 2005, he sent this proposal to the Mozilla mailing list. So he was talking to Mozilla people and thinking how we could make uh, MathML usable in HTML. Because I don't know if you remember, but in the past, MathML was only usable in XML pages. So at the end, this led to the support of MathML in HTML5, which was a big improvement for users. And also it motivated the use of, well, the development of MathML in WebKit and other browsers. Then another important contribution was made by Microsoft. Uh, for, the, uh, for Microsoft Office 2007, they had its support for math layout. And in order to do that, they had some uh, new open type features and open type tables. Uh, this was later standardized. But uh, at least what is interesting is that uh, this allowed to uh, MathML implementation to use uh, this uh, information from the font instead of using hard coded tables. Uh, then we have, uh, at Igalia, we've been working in 2015 and 2016, we've been working on uh, the WebKit implementation. There are already a previous implementation in WebKit, but it has some issues, so we actually decided to rewrite the whole implementation, basically, and to align it more on what Gecko is doing. And then finally, in the past years, we've been talking to a lot of people. Um, <coughs> Yeah, tr trying to get a consensus about how we could uh, basically implement NASM in Chromium. So we agree with the Google Layout team to do that on top of the current uh, uh, layout, render, uh, layout engine they are implementing, called Layout NG. And uh, also we have talked to a lot of spons potential sponsors. Uh, last uh, August we got an announcement from uh, NISO that they are going to fund the project this year. Uh, <coughs> Through a grant from through a Sloan grant, and yeah, and this is what basically what we're doing now. But additionally, we got before we started the project, we got a good surprise uh, because Microsoft announced that they are going to to move to Chromium for the Microsoft Edge uh, uh, for the Microsoft Edge browser. So this means for MathML that uh, we can actually just implement MathML in Chromium, and we would get support in all browsers now. Um, and during the discussion, another thing that was raised was that uh, MathMath3 has a lot of issues. Uh, it was not really maintained. So there are some concerns about the future. And so we, I think there are a lot of people who wanted to create a new community group. So that's what we, we did this uh, at the beginning of the year. Uh, MathMath3 is really a big specification. Um, the first task of the MathML, uh, MathML community group was to extract a core subset, which we call MathML core. 
and it focuses on what is actually implemented in browsers and what is uh, actually used in practice. Um, <coughs> after we have this uh, course that's set, we can try to give more implementation details because, again, MathML 3 was not really explicit about how to do the math layout. So we use the rules from tech and open type to give more details about the math layout. And we also try to get, to get more explicit about uh, how to make this compatible with the rest of the web platform. And finally, another issue with MathML 3 is that it was not really designed with the help of browser vendors, so we have tried to fix this this year. Uh, so Igalia has joined the community group and he's participating to it. And also we got a very helpful feedback from browser vendors, so Mozilla, Apple and Google. And of course we want to write a web platform test, but I'm going back to this later. Uh, so once we have this core subset, one of the issues is that not everybody agree about what is actually uh, important. So some of the features of some of the MathML3 features are removed, and we also want to keep compati uh, backward compatibility with them. So uh, the agreement that we had in the committee group was to actually uh, follow a web ex extensible approach. So basically, we have this core subset, and we all, we add the proper API for web developers so that they can extend the core subset with their own math layout or with their own math construction, including those that were in MathML3. Um, the first step in order to write this kind of polyfills was to actually normalize the MathML DOM because, uh, well, basically, MathML didn't have any idea. It's just using the element uh, idea. So we try to basically implement the same as HTML as SVG so that uh, it behaves the same and it's more expected for the users. <coughs> then we also have this idea of uh, giving this possibility to users to uh, describe their own layout. Uh, so we had to introduce new CSS properties or other things in order to allow that. And finally, we also have this idea of uh, allowing new MathML elements. Uh, we have a lot of discussion about this. Um, one of the ideas is to try to uh, introduce a specific display value for math, which can be overridden with uh, any display value. In particular, display values that are defined by the CSS layout API. Or we have also discussion like, do we want to allow custom MathML elements? And this is interesting because actually this also happens for the specification like SVG. I think even Mozilla is uh, implementing something for Zool, so they can allow custom Zool element. So yeah, I mentioned that we want also to make uh, MathML <coughs> to allow users to do their custom CSS layout. But before we do that, we also actually need to clarify how the MathML layout is done with CSS. Because uh, in MathML Suite was basically not really described. And uh, so the idea is that we want to describe something that is similar to the visual box model of CSS. We also want to, we also try to explain uh, uh, whether or not we support uh, CSS properties and how we interpret them. And we also have this math-specific stuff that are not really possible with CSS right now. And we need, we had to discuss about this and decide how to, to handle this. Uh, there are several examples, but I'm just going to talk about the two last ones. So, for example, the text matrix is really an important uh, aspect. Uh, if you just do a naive box layout, uh, you likely get a very bad spacing, for example, in formulas, as you can see in this fraction. You really need to take into account the ink extent of the text in order to get the precise uh, position. Similarly, if you have this, um, suppose you have a, an integral and you want to attach a subscript to it, uh, you cannot just attach a subscript to the uh, bottom right corner of the bounding box. You really need to take into account the, how slanted the integral is. Then uh, another thing that was well, maybe controversial in the past was how we do operator stretching. Uh, MathML 3 has, a, has an algorithm, but uh, again, it's not really clear how to do that with CSS. 
So we are trying to, to do some effort in order to clarify this. Um, so for those who don't know, the idea is that we have uh, some operators and they have some siblings. And the operator will be stretchy, so they will try to, to stretch to the size of the siblings. Uh, in order to do that, we introduce new layout constraints, basically describing this uh, st uh, stretch size, this target size. And the layout of the uh, operator is performed as follow, of the parent of the operator is performed as follow. So first we lay out all the non-stretchy uh, children. And once we have the, this layout, we can determine the size, we calculate the target size. And then we lay out all the stretchy children, passing them the, the, the target size the layout constraints. And then I'm not going to give details about this, but we have more issues with uh, how fonts are actually designed. It's not an issue during layout, but actually CSS and browsers have a step which is called preferred weights or intrinsic size or, I don't know, content min max. Um, so from, for stretch operator, we are only able to provide an estimate, which means that maybe line breaking is not optimal, for example. Um, okay, so then, of course, one very important aspect is interoperability. As I say, we want to write a web platform test. Uh, currently, we have about 2,000 of them. Um, they are still not running the whole spec, but we are continuing to write more. And we split them into three categories, basically. One is the tests that are only for pure math layouts. Then we have other tests which basically test that the uh, MathML3 features that were removed are no longer supported. And there are other tests that check if uh, MathML integrates well with the rest of the web platform. And as you can see, the current results are really good, at least for Igaya's build, it's almost uh, all the tests passing. And if you wonder why Gecko and WebKit are lower, it's uh, because of the, so the math layout in Gecko and WebKit is good enough, but uh, two other categories, of course, they, are, they still have the features for MathML3 or they still don't have all the clarification from CSS, so they are basically failing this test. Uh, but if we focus only on the pure math layout, I just want to give an example about how it looked like in the past. So this is the formula from the front page. And in very old uh, implementation, you can see that the rendering is not really good. Well, it looks like math, but it's maybe not really uh, laid out correctly, laid out correctly, especially for Opera. And you can see that this year, the, with current uh, implementation based on MathML Core and using open type fonts, we really have more consistent rendering. Well, maybe if you're not aware of math, you probably still see it's messy math symbols, but uh, at least you can see it's more consistent. There are still some issues probably you notice in WebKit. Um, yeah, and finally, we have also done some work to improve uh, Gecko and WebKit. Uh, so MathML, again, was not really clear, so Gecko and WebKit had to do their own interpretation uh, of MathML3, so we are trying to standardize this behavior when possible. And when we don't want to keep the features, we are trying to carefully unship them. Uh, so following the standard approach using counters, uh, using deprecation running, uh, or run tab flag. And we are also uh, converting the old tests from the Mozilla and WebKit repositories, uh, and trying also the other way around to make more web, web platform tests passing. And finally, we are also doing some, a few enhancements and bug fixes. Uh, probably the most notable one is uh, MathML DOM support that I mentioned previously, uh, which is now supported in Gecko and WebKit uh, nightly. <coughs> and so finally, I'm going to talk about the MathML in Chromium. So this is a project workflow. Uh, we basically have, are working on a separate branch uh, on GitHub, MathML Dev. Um, this branch, each time we commit something, we have this billbot doing continuous integration, so checking the style, checking release in debug build, uh, running tests, and so on. Each about one or two weeks, we try to rebase this again upstream, 
also we try to keep the commits well organized. And finally, we have um, also actually the upstream repositories. So in addition to Chromium, we have also, of course, Mozilla and WebKit repositories. Each of these repositories has um, a, a copy of uh, the web platform test repository. And again, we have some automatic uh, synchronization, well, at least for Mozilla and Chromium. For WebKit, we have to do that manually. And uh, then for with these five repositories, we actually have a billboard that each day uh, produces the implementation report that I mentioned. And this implementation report is useful for us to know what we have to work on. Of course, we can properly improve this workflow. And the most of use improvement would be to have a, uh, an arrow from the MathML dev uh, not to the Chromium node, that is to start the upstream. <coughs> Uh, this is the implementation roadmap that we had at the beginning of the project. And uh, as you can notice, most of the things are done. The uh, so HTML compatibility, when the web platform compatibility is still open and ended, but we have done a bunch of work on it and we are still working on it. And finally, again, the upstreaming is not started yet. Uh, regarding the commits of the Chromium, uh, of the current support. Um, we have tried to split it into basically three categories. As I say, we want to organize, this, organize them properly. So the first layer is basically all the base setup, uh, in, including the MathML file into the build systems, um, adding the runtime flag, adding proper CSS or DOM properties and so on, and classes. Then we have this separate layer that is introducing all the low-level APIs, which are not, which, well, basically which are needed to do math layout, but which are not specific to MathML. So in theory, they could still be used in the future if we, for example, expose this API to web developers. And finally, we have the MathML implementation itself. Uh, to give, I'm not uh, going to give details here. And there is also this big cluster diagram. Uh, again, I won't give details, but um, it's just showing that we are splitting uh, MathML into different components. Uh, then we don't want MathML to be intrusive, so we have checked a bit the size impact. Uh, for the optimal Scrum build, uh, the binary increase is relatively small. It's about 300 kilobytes. And if it's compressed in the archive, it's less than 50 kilobytes. Reading the code, um, the number of lines in total for all the mathematical code is currently less than 10,000 of lines, which uh, maybe sounds big, but if you compare with SVG, uh, SVG only the SVG specific folders are taking more than 60,000 <coughs> of lines. And finally, as usual for new Chromium features, we need to follow the launching process. Well, for MathML, it was a bit special because we have done a lot of work before. Uh, so the first phase will be now to announce uh, the work, uh, trying to explain what we are doing, uh, sending the intent to implement, the design doc, uh, trying to get feedback from different uh, W3C groups, in particular the tag group, etc. And then we can actually start the implementation phase, which uh, again, we have a lot of patches, but maybe we have to do more change after review. We also need to write tests. And we also, we already have tests, but we need to more, write more, as I say. And uh, at the end of this implementation phase, we will send the intent to ship. Uh, so during this implementation phase, actually the MathML is turned off under this preference flag. And once we get approval from three API owner, we will be able to turn it on. And then when it is on and sent to users, it's the usual things. We <laughs> need to do post launch uh, uh, maintenance, so fix bugs and so on, address the feedback, and also continue to work on the integrity in Gecko and WebKit. <coughs> so that's basically all. So now I'm just going to give a quick set of demos. Uh, so this is uh, the Mozilla test, which is based on the test from the textbook. 
and uh, as you can see on the left side it is how it, a screenshot of how tech is rendered and on the right side is how it is rendered in in, in, math, in uh, MathML using Chromium so it's more or less um, the same there are some bugs I think that we need to fix I need to talk with Rob about this but yeah it's looking much better than in the past um, then we have this big uh, page with a lot of MathML content, uh, fancy formulas. And if I try to uh, uh, reload the page, you see it's really rendered really quickly. Uh, but what I didn't say that actually this page is uh, not really MathML. Well, actually, it's MathML, but if you look carefully, the MathML is included in a shadow root. And this shadow root is actually inside a lat a lat dash tech custom element, which contains some uh, text, which is a text source. And this is converted in JavaScript into the shadow DOM MathML and rendered. So this is done for each formula of this page. And this is done, as you can see, really quickly. <coughs> and then I need to... Yeah, so then there is this, this is actually using uh, LaTeX to mathematical converters that I was, that I implemented some years ago. Uh, so again, you have some formulas. Uh, you can do the usual display and inline style, uh, for those who know this concept from uh, math. Basically, inline is just that it takes less vertical space so that it can be included inside text. Uh, we have some right to left support. Uh, maybe it's not working. Also. And uh, we had some experiment with for oops, there is a bug here. <laughs> uh, we have some support from some experiment support for vertical layout, but we disabled it because we were not sure how to actually do that uh, precisely. Of course, you can also do the usual font family, so you can use different fonts for. MathML, and again, you, you can see it's workflow very quickly. Uh, so again, all these fonts are based on the open type uh, tables that I mentioned at the beginning that were designed by Microsoft. And I also mentioned the compatibility with CSS. So again, uh, for example, the, maybe the most obvious one is to create some padding and you can add some panning around formula, or some, bo or some border with dash, uh, some margin, and so on. So again, it's useful for web developers who want to write their own, well, their own uh, math layout, or who want just to customize the layout to tweak it for, with spacing and so on. And, <coughs> and at the beginning, I mentioned uh, this idea of introducing this display math uh, value. That can be overridden. So, for example, if someone wants to override it with uh, uh, some display inline flex, put one as a flex box. Or if you dis use display grid, it's one as a grid. And of course, you can also uh, use the CSS layout API to provide your own custom layout. So, by default, this is using. Um, <coughs> The MULC script uh, rendering of MathML, which is just you have the base and attach some scripts. And the bounding box is in dash. But if I click on it, it's, it's then using the display, the custom display. Uh, CSS custom display. As you can see, there are some bugs because I was not sure how to handle, for example, uh, uh, baseline alignment using the, this uh, Houdini things. But at least uh, it's, it's working more or less. So this is an interesting idea, I think. Uh, if people want to write their own uh, custom math layout. And I think that's all for me. Uh, yeah. So if you have any questions? <laughs> what, uh, what are the big barriers to upstreaming this work now? 
what's left. Yeah. Um, so, right. I guess probably the one that are missing are try to write all the design docs and so on and try to explain it. Uh, I think right now we have uh, good feedback from people, from the different groups, so at least it's, it's good, but we still need to officially launch the process. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Where are you getting the ink baselines? Yeah, so I think Rob can explain this. <laughs> Some coming API, just get the founding box of a grid, okay. any grid, uh, so that's what you try that. Uh, it's still pretty custom. So, so it's internal one. What? It's an internal API. From it's an API. Okay. So, but that would give you slightly inconsistent results if you, for example, if you take the founding box of an X and the founding box of an O, they are slightly different. Yeah, right. But that's on purpose. That's how the math layout is done. But you don't actually want to lay out, like if you write X and then O, and you're using the ink, they won't line up the way they are doing text. Uh, but we are actually using the the baseline, so we also calculate the baseline, and we are able to to know where. So it means if I, so there's a slight difference both on the top and on the bottom. So if you type in O, everything will shift a little bit, right? You have X and then you have XO, and they won't line up. Yeah, but uh, as we say, we are taking into account the baseline alignment. So we are calculating the baseline, and when we try to move the things to, to align the baseline. Mm. I'm not sure if <laughs> you don't seem to be happy. <laughs> Because you're using the top edge as well, right? So it's yeah, but uh, layout engine has a concept of lay of baseline uh, baseline things, so that's what we're using. Um, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> we will need to check the code exactly. So <laughs> that's how it's working. So the issue, isn't the issue that the bounding boxes are used to determine the size of the surrounding parent, um, and so they get laid out along the baseline by the engine, but it, instead of using their the full glyph size or whatever, mm -hmm. using their regular size, and then you can place the superscripts accordingly. And yes, you know, a uh, page is going to place the superscript in a different place than an X, but they're all going to lay out because you're just laying the characters out, not, not using each individual um, bounding block as you lay it out. Okay, so when I figure right, X superscript 2, O superscript 2, the 2s will not be at the same position. Is that what you actually no, Potentially. Um, yeah. Generally speaking, it probably is. Yeah, so, so the X and the O. Even though they, they're both lowercase letters. Yeah, and that's just the way that layout works. Okay, but that doesn't seem ideal from a typographic perspective. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it turns out the lowercase letters, they're close enough. They, are the same. I guess if you have an ascender at the age, they're going to be very different. But that's just the way they have to go in the line. Uh, tap will do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so Martin was actually asking me what is the barrier to launch the features. So what I'm proposing is maybe we can now send the intent to implement if everybody agrees. <laughs> okay, anyone against it? <laughs> so let's send it. So we already prepared the email. It's a very long email. <laughs> And uh, it's slow. What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now people will have some stuff to read. <laughs> <laughs> and complain or give feedback. <laughs> and my SMT <laughs> is not to do Failure. <laughs> 
Okay, I'll do that later, I think. <laughs> Thanks.